Hello, my name is Courtney Colley, and I am the Chronic Wasting Disease Communication Specialist for the Pennsylvania Game Commission. Chronic wasting disease is an always fatal brain disease that affects members of the deer family. Unfortunately, there is no vaccine or treatment for CWD. CWD has a long incubation period, meaning it takes a long time for symptoms to show. On average, CWD infected individuals do not show symptoms for 18 to 24 months. This means that a healthy looking deer, like the one on the left, can be infected with CWD. However, a sick looking deer, like the one on the right, may or may not be infected with CWD. The only way to tell if a deer is infected is to have the deer tested. Currently, there are no approved live tests for CWD. CWD is believed to be caused by a defective protein called a prion. Prions accumulate in the central nervous system, causing tiny holes to form in the brain, eventually leading to death. Once deer begin to show signs of CWD, symptoms include lower head and ears, excessive drooling, excessive thirst, excessive urination, thinning or wasting as the name implies, a rough hair coat, and behavioral problems such as listlessness, meaning not wanting to move, or the lack of fear of humans. All photos and videos displayed on this slide were clinical suspects that tested positive in the south central part of the state. Clinical suspects are deer that are found showing outward signs of disease. CWD prions can be transmitted through animal to animal contact or through prion contaminated land. Infected deer can shed prions onto the land through saliva, urine, and feces. Once in the soil, prions can remain infectious for several years. Studies have shown that prions can withstand freezing and thawing, as well as temperatures reaching 1100 degrees Fahrenheit. So you are not cooking prions out of your meat. Where there have been no reported cases of CWD in humans, experimental studies have shown CWD can be transmitted to non-human primates. These findings raise concern that CWD may pose a potential risk to humans as well. In addition, CWD is closely related to mad cow disease, which has been found to infect humans through consuming meat from infected animals. For these reasons, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention recommends no one knowingly consume meat from CWD-infected animals. In addition, the Game Commission recommends anyone who harvests deer in a CWD-positive area get their deer tested before consuming. Hunters who harvest deer in Pennsylvania's disease management areas can get their deer tested free of charge by submitting heads in Game Commission-provided head collection bins. CWD was first confirmed in a captive deer facility in Colorado in 1967. Since CWD has spread and has been confirmed in 26 states, including Pennsylvania and three Canadian provinces. CWD was first detected in Pennsylvania in 2012 in a deer farm in Adams County. Shortly after, three wild positives were detected in Bedford and Blair counties. As a result, disease management areas one and two were created. Disease management areas are areas of land where CWD has been detected and where specific rules apply to help slow the spread of CWD. The Game Commission began testing for CWD in 1998, more than 10 years before CWD was detected in the state. Since 1998, the Game Commission has tested nearly 80,000 wild deer for CWD and over 800 wild elk. These efforts aim to quickly detect new cases of CWD within the state and to monitor the infection rate of CWD within Pennsylvania's disease management areas. If you see something, say something by reporting sick deer to your local regional office. Hunters who harvest deer in a disease management area can help detection efforts by submitting their deer head in a head collection container provided by the Game Commission for free testing. To increase detection efforts, the Game Commission has provided increased opportunities for hunters to harvest deer within disease management areas through the use of DMAP permits. Each DMAP permit 
allows hunters to harvest one additional antlerless deer within specific areas of Pennsylvania's disease management areas. Hunters outside of disease management areas can get their deer tested through Pennsylvania Veterinary Laboratory in Harrisburg for a fee. In addition to monitoring the spread of CWD, the Game Commission has established specific rules within disease management areas to help slow the spread of CWD. Within disease management areas, it is unlawful to feed wild deer or elk, use or possess natural urine-based attractants in the field, and to transport high-risk parts out of the disease management area. High-risk parts include the head, more specifically the brain, eyes, lymph nodes, and tonsils, spinal cord, and spleen. These parts are considered high risk because prions concentrate in high densities in these locations. The importance of this regulation is to prevent people from dumping high risk parts on the landscape in uninfected areas, possibly contaminating the soil in that area or exposing healthy deer or elk to the disease. However, despite all these efforts, CWD continues to spread across the state every year. This map shows the evolution of Pennsylvania's disease management areas since 2012. When CWD is detected, either in wild or farmed deer, a disease management area is created. Once again, within these areas, specific rules apply to slow the spread of CWD. As you can see, currently, our disease management areas encompass over 8,000 square miles in the state. Like other diseases, CWD is not evenly distributed across Pennsylvania. CWD is a silent killer. CWD sneaks into an area and slowly picks off one individual at a time, slowly growing, right under your nose. Before you know it, 50% of your deer herd is infected. And what is worse is once CWD becomes established in the soil, it is near impossible to eradicate. This is most likely the bleak outlook for Bedford Blair and Fulton County, where over 90% of the CWD cases have been detected in Pennsylvania. And just like DMA-3 and DMA-4, DMA-2 started with just a couple positives. With three wild deer testing positive for CWD in 2012, two in 2013, five in 2014, 12 in 2015, 25 in 2016, 79 in 2017, and 123 in 2018. This brings the total number of wild positives detected in Pennsylvania to 250. If this pattern continues, what can we expect later this year? Five years from now, 10, 20, or even 50 years from now. Studies in other states show that CWD infected deer are more likely to die annually than uninfected deer. As a result, CWD can decrease deer populations over time. But all is not lost because we are seeing some success in other states. Methods to manage CWD varies from state to state. This graph shows how different management methods affect the infection rate of CWD. West Virginia is a state that practices passive management. This means that no aggressive actions are taken to control CWD. West Virginia monitors the annual spread and infection rate in the state. As you can see, through passive management, West Virginia's infection rates have continually increased. Both Wisconsin and Illinois detected CWD within their borders in 2002. And both states implemented an aggressive management strategy that increased hunter harvest and targeted removals meaning sharpshooters, to reduce deer populations in areas where CWD had been detected. However, due to a lack of public support, Wisconsin was forced to stop all target removals in 2007. Since 2007, Wisconsin's infection rate has increased, with some areas of the state reporting that 50% of their adult bucks are infected with CWD. Now let's talk about Illinois. As you can see, Illinois has been able to keep a low infection rate by consistently using increased hunter harvest and targeted removals 
to reduce their populations around known CWD detections. Through this management strategy, they have kept their infection rate at about 2% since 2002. As you can see, Pennsylvania is currently following a similar trend as Wisconsin and West Virginia. However, Illinois is not our only success story. New York detected chronic wasting disease in both wild and farm deer in 2005. In response, New York acted quickly, implementing an aggressive management strategy that used hunter harvest and target removals in the immediate area. New York has not detected any more cases of CWD in the past 14 years. Similarly, Minnesota first detected CWD in a wild deer in Olmsted County in 2010, only two miles from a CWD positive farm. Minnesota responded quickly and implemented aggressive management actions, including hunter harvest and target removals within the local area over the next three years. Since no additional CWD positives have been detected in the local wild population. These success stories, along with experiences from other states, provide hope that increased hunter harvest and target removals, if conducted quickly and effectively after CWD is detected in a new area, can be used to successfully combat CWD. To better understand how this works, we must first understand how CWD spreads through a population naturally. Just like people, an infected deer is more likely to infect their family because these individuals live in close proximity to one another. In addition, infected deer have a higher probability of infecting deer whose home ranges overlap with theirs. A home range is basically an area where the deer moves daily. A great example of a home range for humans are places that you travel on a daily basis, such as your house, work, or the grocery store. These circles represent a deer's home range. As you can see, the pattern continues. With CWD infected deer first infecting the deer that are closest to them, then infecting deer that commonly encounter their home range. It is important to note that deer may travel outside of their home range if food is scarce or for breeding. So while these deer have a lower probability of being infected, it is not impossible. And I'm talking about the deer in the upper left hand corner there. Mimicking management methods taken in Illinois, New York, and Minnesota, what happens if we increase harvest in areas directly surrounding a new CWD positive? By lowering the deer population, we have lowered the chance an infected deer will come in contact with a healthy deer, and in turn slow the spread of CWD. It is important to note that once a deer is infected, it could be shedding prions onto the land, creating another way for healthy deer to become infected. Therefore, this method is most effective if deer are removed quickly after discovery of a new positive. The Game Commission has drafted a response plan for CWD for 2020, which we are looking for public input. Management actions proposed in this draft response plan mimic actions taken in other states, like Illinois, and strive to stabilize CWD infection rate and slow the spread of CWD in Pennsylvania. The Game Commission consulted various representatives from other states, representatives from nonprofit organizations, and representatives from universities to create this draft. And now we would like to get your thoughts. To determine areas where these management actions will take place, a three mile radius circle will be drawn around each detected positive as seen here. In areas with higher infection rates, these circles may overlap each other, creating one larger area, which we will call the established area. Within this area, CWD is most likely already established in the soil and therefore for unlikely to be eradicated. Within the established area, the management goal will be to keep CWD infection rate at or below 5%. Detections found outside of the established area will be called control zones and will require additional management actions. 
Increased hunting opportunities to manage CWD will take place within these areas to slow the spread and stabilize the infection rate of CWD. In each of these locations, population surveys will be conducted prior to hunting season to determine local populations. The sampling goal or number of deer that need to be harvested will be determined based on these population surveys. On average, 350 deer will need to be harvested within each three mile radius to confidently detect CWD at a 1% infection rate. To reach this goal, hunters collectively will need to harvest an average uh, an additional four deer per square mile and submit all heads in a head collection container. In these areas, the Game Commission would like to increase hunting opportunities to help slow the spread and stabilize the infection rate of CWD. Options under consideration to increase hunter opportunities include increasing antlerless tag allocations, concurrent or extended hunting seasons, and the removal of antler point restrictions. While many favor antler point restrictions statewide, removing antler point restrictions within disease management areas could effectively lower CWD infection rates. Antler point restrictions allow more adult bucks to be in the population and adult bucks are three times more likely to be infected with CWD than any other deer. Removing antler point restrictions within disease management areas would allow hunters to harvest more bucks and therefore lower the infection rate. Hunters are given the first opportunity to harvest deer in CWD positive areas through additional antlerless tags called DMAP permits. DMAP permits can be used only within the unit for which they're issued. Hunters can obtain up to two DMAP permits for each unit. Each permit can be used to harvest one antlerless deer. Please help us monitor the spread of CWD in these areas by submitting heads for free CWD testing within the disease management areas. These samples help monitor the infection rate and spatial distribution of disease around CWD positives and help guide future management actions. If and only if enough samples are not provided, to determine the infection rate and spatial distribution of the disease in a local area, will the Game Commission consider target removals or sharpshooting to meet management goals? Target removals will only occur after the close of hunting seasons and only with landowner permission. If target removals are needed, USDA will use infrared technology to estimate current populations in the area. USDA will only harvest enough deer to meet management goals. To ensure a safe and effective shot, USDA may use baiting and suppress rifles to harvest deer within these areas. All deer taken through target removals are tested for CWD. All meat from deer that tests positive for CWD will be properly disposed of. The remaining meat will be donated to cooperating landowners or to hunters sharing the harvest. And moving forward, we will continue to manage and protect Pennsylvania's birds and man mammals with the best available science. At no time in history have diseases posed more problems to wildlife and conservation than now. White nose syndrome has killed 99% of most cave dwelling bat species. The little brown bat, which used to be one of the most abundant bat species in Pennsylvania, has been added to the endangered species list. Chronic wasting disease continues to spread to new parts of Pennsylvania, infecting and killing deer, and threatening the tradition of hunting. West Nile virus has left Pennsylvania state bird, the rough grouse, with an uncertain future. That is why the Pennsylvania Game Commission and PennVet have formed a partnership to address these problems head on through the Pennsylvania Wildlife Futures Program. Dedicating 12 disease specialists to address wildlife diseases across the state, this new science-based wildlife health program serves to increase disease surveillance, management, and research to better protect our wildlife today and in the future. Over the next six months, we will be sending surveys, both inside and outside the disease management areas to gain a better understanding of the public knowledge of CWD and support for, or lack of support for, management options proposed in this draft response plan. In addition, the Game Commission will host public events or meetings to better inform the public about CWD and to ask for public comment on the draft response plan for 2020. The draft response plan will be available to read and for public, open for public comment on the Game Commission website. 
at www.pgc.pa.gov. The draft plan will be available for review and comment until February 29, 2020. All comments and data from surveys will be analyzed and used to guide revisions on the final CWD response plan. The Game Commission will also continue to consult other state wildlife agencies, nonprofit organizations, and universities to make revisions to the draft response plan. Before I take, take questions, the Game Commission would like to thank everyone for being here today. Your help is critical to controlling CWD. No matter who you are or where you live, you can help prevent the spread of CWD. Individuals living within or outside disease management areas can help by practicing CWD regulations no matter where you are in the state. This includes not feeding wild deer and not using natural urine-based attractants in the field. Hunters can help by limiting the movement of and properly disposing of high-risk parts. In addition, hunters can help detection efforts by filling DMAT permits and submitting heads for testing. Landowners can help by opening access to land for hunters within DMAP units. And everyone can help by educating not only ourselves, but those around us. You can find updated information on CBD on the Game Commission website at www.pgc.pa.gov. Together, we can control CWD. Just another reminder to provide comment or to to provide comment or to review the CWD draft response plan, please go to www.pgc.pa.gov. And for questions on CWD, you can email us at infocwd at, at pa.gov or call us at 1-833-INFO-CWD. Thank you.